Good morning. Welcome to early morning prayers from Calvary Episcopal Church in Memphis. Our prayers will begin at 630, following the form on page 137 of the Book of Common Prayer. Today is March the 31st, Thursday, in the fourth week of Lent. We're winding down. Um, today the church commemorates John Dunn. <clears throat> oh, good morning, Gail. Good morning, Tom. Good to see you today. Uh, seems like it's still bird chirping time out there. They're, they're waking up. <clears throat> Pleased to announce that my inspection of the cherry trees along Cherry Road are that they are beginning to peep out with some blooms. I thought they were dead stick dead trees and um, looks like maybe not. They're not going to be as beautiful as we expect them to be, maybe. But it looks like they're not dead. <clears throat> Good morning, Joanna, Betty Jo, good to have you today. Uh, as I said, the church commemorates John Dunn. Uh, he was a priest and poet, died in 1631. <clears throat> One of his quotes, any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. <clears throat> These words are familiar to many. Their author, John Donne, though less well known, is one of the greatest of English poets. In his own time, he was the best known preacher in the Church of England. He came to that eminence <clears throat> by a torturous path. Born into a wealthy and pious Roman Catholic family, on January the 21st in 1572 in, Lon in London. <clears throat> he was educated at both Oxford and Cambridge and studied law in Lincoln's Inn. Sometime later, he conformed to the established church and embarked upon a promising political career in service to the state. The revelation that his secret marriage in 1601 to the niece of his employer, the Lord Keeper of the Great Seal, brought his public career to an end. In 1615, he was persuaded by King James I and others to receive ordination. <clears throat> Good morning, Tori and Rick. Good to see y'all at Waffle Shop. Um, we're reading about John Dunn, who died in 1631. Following several brief parish pastorates, Dunn rose rapidly in popularity as Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral, London, from 1621 until his death. He drew great throngs to the cathedral and to Paul's Cross, a nearby open-air pulpit. His sermons reflect the wide learning of, scholar, of the scholar, the passionate intensity of the poet, and the profound devotion of one struggling in his own life to relate the freedom and demands of the gospel to the concerns of a common humanity on every level and in all its complexities. The hymn, Wilt Thou Forgive That Sin Where I Begun, in our current hymnal, uh, the 1982 hymnal, uh, number 140, is one of his poetic legacies. And there's another poem that I am not planning to try to read. John Dunn died in 1631. Any more news today? It looks like bird chirping time is ending. They, um, um, I love to hear them when they first wake up. They just all do their thing there for about 15 minutes. Then, uh, then they quiet down and get about their business, I guess. 
<clears throat> it is 6.30. Shall we begin? Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A reading from Exodus. The honeymoon seems to be over in Egypt. Joseph died, and all his brothers, and that whole generation. But the Israelites were fruitful and prolific. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong, so that the land was filled with them. Now a new king arose in Egypt who did not know Joseph, and he said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. <clears throat> Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities. Pitham and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in, their, in, in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick. And in every kind of field labor, they were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other Pua. When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and they did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them. But they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the, women and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today, today is Psalm 69 found on page 679 of the Book of Common Prayer. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kind, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, and that has turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. 
In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Do not let the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. <clears throat> Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me because of my enemies. Deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. <clears throat> As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of the Lord in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 12, beginning at the 12th verse. Just as the body is one with its many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of a body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose, if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor and are less respectable and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more res respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Art. Good morning, Marcy. Good to see you this morning. From St. Augustine's prayer book, 
in God's presence. Think through the day ahead, the work you will do, the people you will encounter, the dangers or uncertainties you face, the possibilities for joy and acts of kindness, any particular resolutions you need to renew. Consider what might draw you from the love of God and neighbor. The opportunities you will have to know and serve God and to grow in virtue. Remember those closest to you and all for whom you have agreed to pray. Now let's join in prayer, intercessions and thanksgivings. <clears throat> Silently or publicly in the comments. Still praying for Tom Roundtree as he figures out his event. He had a had a seizure of some sort and praying for needy also. Oh, good morning, Kendra. Good to see you. And Kendra prays for all working in education and and for Doug and Kevin and Ruthie and Walker. Walter Walker Billions, young man struggling with effects of COVID. For Bunny, for Diane, for Robin and Ken. Prayers for the UK, Ukrainian people. Art for his grandsons Ford and Arthur. Pray for Troy and his family. Continuing to play, pray for Jimmy Madden and Elizabeth and for their son, Jim. For Evelyn Mills, for Rosemary Clark. And for Jeff Gross. Seems to be doing better these days, actually. Betty Joe says, give thanks for the midwives in Exodus. Yes, that they did the right thing. Share a prayer for peace from the prayer book, number four. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread, spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Ask God's blessings, guidance, and strength in all that lies before you. Gather up these thoughts and reflections with the words our Savior taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not, and lead us not into temptation. Let's start that over again. <laughs> give, us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And a collect for our commendation. Almighty God, the root and fountain of all being, open our eyes to see with your servant John Donne that whatever has any being is a mirror in which we may behold you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining in prayer today. I hope you just have a wonderful day. Um, and I would love for it to include a trip to the waffle shop today. Um, my good old friend Dan Matthews is the preacher, and I can't wait to see him. Um, former rector of Trinity Church, Wall Street, and um, and with lots of other things on his on his resume also. <clears throat> I knew him first when I was a young teenager at Camp Kayla Maxson uh, in Monteagle. And he was the priest in charge that year <clears throat> and the curate of uh, Holy Comforter, I think the name of the little church is, uh, that's uh, right across the street from, from DuBose Conference Center. Then uh, tomorrow uh, at Waffle Shop is the Reverend Dr. Catherine Kimmel, who is a senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Memphis. <coughs> I think she's new there, and this will be our first time to hear her at Calvary. Uh, that'll be a treat also. Later this morning, uh, morning prayer at 8, as usual. And tomorrow morning at 6.30, Kendra will be back. To finish up the week and uh, and then on to the weekend and Sunday morning. Um, this is the Sunday that there is even song uh, on Sunday afternoon at five. Um, this is this is a monthly treat. Uh, the, the is a choir tradition now that we sing even song every first Sunday and uh, and now of course there's greater intensity because uh, we're preparing to to go to England uh, in the summer in July uh, for a uh, for an even song residency at St Albans Cathedral so the things that we're singing at even song will be things that we sing when we take our act to England we'd love to see you there Well, good day, everyone. <clears throat>